Daddy, folks, little John, and I'm about to sit down and uh, have a couple of beers. Uh, so I'm going to do a couple of reviews, but this is a little bit different. Um, as I said with the views, I sort of I've been thinking about trying to get some sort of theme with each um, with the reviews as if I can, and um, the theme for this one is. Uh, Basically, uh, one of the patrons, uh, Jason, Jason James, uh, Cheers Mullows, uh, has, whilst well, passing through town a few days ago, dropped me a couple of beers that he'd, um, he'd purchased while he was on a little uh, weekend with his, um, on the stray day weekend with his family. Uh, so he dropped them in. Now, I didn't go around to him, but finally he posted up a picture last night of, um, this first beer uh, particularly and was um, interested in my opinion on it so uh, given I didn't have any great plans for what beer I might drink this afternoon I've just done a heap of cleaning up um, scrubbed and rubbed and washed and rinsed and dried and carried on so I'm keen for a bloody beer so this is going to be a free beer review uh, I might get through them all this afternoon we'll see how we go um, so, but before I do, um, obviously like I said Jason's a, um, a patron, so big shout out to all the patrons. Links down the bottom if you're interested in seeing what it's about. Uh, also shout out to anyone who's subscribed. If you're not, and again, if you're not subscribed, hit the button. But hit the like button down there as well. So this is where we start off. Uh, this is. Bulletin Brewing Company. Uh, it's called the Daily Pale Ale. Uh, that's going to pour on here. Now I'm not going to get all this into the glass. She's the bigger can. Uh, we'll get her underway. Okay, and she's an ale of uh, a pale nature. Yes, indeed. Uh, It says in the back here, a true brew. In today's day and age, everyone has a story to tell, but here at the Bulletin, integrity is key. Amidst a whirlwind of fake news, right swipes and 14th place participation awards, we questioned how we could help. Our answer? Inspire genuine moments, and in our eyes, there's nothing truer than a cold, refreshing brew shared in a good company. Well, that's certainly true. So no matter the times, we'll always stay true to the craft so that you can stay true to you. So this is uh, brewed. Okay, it's brewed under licence by the Source Brewing Company in Marrickville. Okay. So, obviously they're a, uh, so the contract brewing the beer out. Now Source are a, uh, Decent brewery, well regarded. So that's a um, they've got that's certainly a good start. Yeah, let's try and get our package. Okay. <laughs> I don't I don't know what's going on here, my lads. But anyway, I'm going to leave that for a minute. Um, no, um, no, I'm going to go. Um, I don't know what's going on. Um, with Mr. Mullows. Uh, I think you're trying to pull a Swifty on me here. But anyway, uh, best before date on this is the 4th of October 2019. Now, Mullows, I'm hoping you found these tucked away in the back of your fridge somewhere and you decided, bloody, <laughs> you better drink one and get into them and thought you'd share one with me. I certainly hope you've not bought this while you're on your, buddy, on your weekend away. Um, anyway, so. It's going to be awfully hard to give a real good review of this, I'd imagine, but <laughs> we'll have a go at it. It's, it's looking a little bit, a little bit hazy. So it's, it's got a decent amount of carb for uh, holding a, got a decent bit of head there for a beer that's now uh, it's a year and a half, um, year, year and a half old. 
since it's been brewed. And well, what was interesting was that um, Jason had posted up um, what well, my opinion would be, uh, and then commented that was, you know, he didn't think it was you know, much bloody chop. Um, now, given that it is so old, it's going to be awfully hard for it to be um, anywhere near its best. <laughs> But clearly, any review of this is just, uh, it is really pointless. Um, and that being said, I don't even know if these guys even still exist as a marketing outlet. Uh, I don't know. Um, let me fire up the old information machine and see what it may be able to tell us. See if we can get any info. Because I've... I'm pretty sure I've seen the name somewhere um, prior to getting the beer. Because uh, when Marlowe's handed it to me, um, I sort of, I did sort of recognise it. Uh, but I'm not sure. Oh, it's about the bloody rain again. That's fabulous. Uh, da, 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 so. Let's just hit a bit of a search here and see what we come up with. Bulletin Brewing. There we go. That's listed under Source Brewing. Okay. Uh, it only takes me to source. It's not giving me anything. On bulletin itself. That's interesting because the first link I'm getting is source. Well, there's no mention of bulletin in that. There is nothing on anyone called Bulletin Brewing. They're on untapped, I'll see what that brings up. Uh, just says you the contract brewery. Okay, people have bought beers in uh, recent months, so uh, November, December, January, so clearly they're still uh, knocking beers out. Uh, getting a little bit of a nod. What's that? What's this beer actually? It's a session ale, this one that's all popping up. So, okay. Bulletin Brewing Company, subsidiary of independent liquor retailers. Okay, I'll have to look into that further. I'm not going to do it right now, so... But... Obviously it's a mob of some kind, but yeah. <laughs> Malaysia you've got me with that one. That being said, it's not a terrible beer as it is. Um, and I think it may have been interesting. May have been interesting to actually try it. Yeah, when it was actually yeah, when it was fresh and in date, because there's some there's clearly some hot, hot presence there. And I said sauce brew a good beer, um, but if it is contract brewed by someone else or someone else, uh, then obviously they're using their own recipe. It does never hurt your beer to have it brewed by a good brewer, but. Uh, recipe, you still need recipes. 
Well, yeah. But anyway, Mallows, mm. you're a bugger. I'll get you back for this. I'm gonna keep a bloody. I'm gonna throw a broad batch of shit beer and bloody send you some just on purpose. Might even leave a bottle out in the skunk or something. Keep that to you. <laughs> anyway, all right. Well, I'm gonna finish this one, and we'll get on to the next two. Now yeah, I'm pretty confident the next two are gonna be serious beers. So I'll see you then. done. Let's move on to the uh, next fella. Now, <laughs> you're not getting me a second time's my lights. Uh, that's more like a package on the 3rd of November. So that's a bit better. Anyway, so this one, another pale ale, and this is from Knobulus Brewing Company in orange, which is as far as breweries go. This is one. Of, this is going to be one of my locals. It's uh, about about just under two hours, sort of orange from here. Um, all all anything that's sort of two hours from me uh, is local, because that's about how far it takes to get anywhere. Um, so on on that record, actually on that reckoning, um, I would hazard a guess that Ben Spoke is actually my local, because um, it's probably the shortest drive. Be close. Anyway, um, <laughs> that's not what we're here for. Anyway, uh, let's get. Poured in a glass. And I said, I know uh, Mallow's quite often uh, hits up uh, Pioneer Brewing, which is Pioneer Brewing, which are outside of Orange. Uh, I think they're sort of between Orange and Bathurst, uh, but in that direction. Uh, so he's quite often got some of the ability. He goes over that way a bit for uh, here and there. Um, Orange is also the home of Badlands Brewing. Uh, I've had like one, maybe two of their beers over the time, and they're not they're not bad. Um, so this is the uh, now the third brewery that I'm aware of that's uh, in the Orange region. And this one says, "Our new our brewery at Mount Canobulus lies the rough and rugged hiking trails around Federal Falls, with floral notes of pine and citrus, a smooth hop bitterness, and a well-balanced malt profile." Our sessionable pale ale captures the refreshing feeling of having just finished a gruelling hike to the top of a mountain. Now you can experience it without even having left the couch. Our brewers suffered the hike, so you don't have to. Enjoy responsibly. Unfiltered. That's it. She's reasonably, reasonably fresh. Uh, brewed and canned by Mad Hatter Beverage Company, 137 Peasley Street, Orange. Okay, so a can by brewed doesn't actually say that it's actually brewed in orange. Uh, so they're independent, so the change up anyway. 4.7% alcohol. She's pouring with a good level of carbonation. Uh, it's nice and quite light, very light golden, pushing towards straw, a big white head, Ooh, nice and zesty nose on it. Mm. There is a nice little citrusy edge. Quite a nice little nose on that.
Okay. Okay. Ah. Uh, the other side of things, but the, the, this is—it's not a bad beer. It's very. Very easy going. Yeah, the... yeah. Says sessionable pale ale. Yeah. Yep, definitely sessionable. Smashable even. It's light on the flavour, but there's enough there to be interesting. Um, very, very light malt. Nice little bit of citrus there. It's a tiny bit of pine early in the mouth. that little bit of citrus just comes up and it's not big citrus it's quite quite gentle there's a touch of just a hint of a little bit of a sherbet note on that uh, but it's very old school traditional pale ale it's just it's a light body beer, light malt, lightly hopped, but enough that there's some, some interest. You know, taking that step up from, pardon me, from a basic lager where it's malt and sort of going up there a little bit more, getting just a little bit more interest in the beer. And that, that, that's doing that pretty well. It's, it's easy to drink. Simple, straightforward, it's not trying to be anything obnoxious. Um, the only thing I find that sort of it's, it's drinking for me like a lower alcohol beer. Um, They're saying, yeah, it's, it's a sessionable pale ale with 4.7%. You're up there in the full strength range. Um, for me, to be truly sessionable, you need to be in that, yeah, mid to lower end of the fours. Uh, in that range where you can knock them back reasonably quickly without getting, yeah, getting too silly too quickly. And at 4.7, you are in, I said, you're going into that higher end of the, yeah. You're certainly not getting into craft, normal craft beer sort of range like you're getting into those five and six and seven. But to be truly sessionable, it's, for me, it's not just about the flavour, it's also about the alcohol content. If you're going to a beer down to the point where you can sit there and drink it relatively quickly and easily, then you can certainly do that with that. Then I tend to tend to like the scene just that little bit just that little bit lower um, just so you can yeah you can get you can get a little bit more of a minty you can go a little bit a little bit harder uh, without getting you know too out of hand but that's a that is a minor issue because uh, that's bloody that's a tasty bit Yeah, and like I say, not tasty from the from the point of it's got heaps going on, but you're drinking it and there's interest in your mouth. There's something happening. There's something going on. The beer's got a story to tell. It's got a big story, but it's a story about Canabalus. <laughs> it's not a big it's not a big mountain. That makes sense. <laughs> um, you're a big mountain, get a, get a fucking, get Everest. That's a big mountain. Uh, 
<laughs> Mount Canopolis. Reality is, there's not much more than a bloody hill. But anyway, that's what it is. It's a hill. But Australia is the land of big hills. Uh, so, and this is one of them. But it's definitely worthy of having a go. Definitely, if you see this fella around, and I imagine this is going to be hard to find. I can't imagine it's going to be easy to find, but in the vein of XPAs and that sort of style, and I said your sessionable session pay ales, it's definitely worth having a go if you can find it. Score wise, for what it is, I'm going to give it a seven and a half. It's quite tasty. All good. I'm going to finish that. And we're going to make the last one, which is going to be what well, I'm expecting to be a step up. Okay, I said things were going to get a little bit more serious. Um, and, yeah, I wasn't joking. <laughs> As anyone would know, I'm generally fairly forthright and serious. Uh, this is the uh, third beer of the trio. Trimit River Brewing Company, 50 Shades of Purple, Milkshake IPA, so um, not particularly my favourite style of beer, but in the world, packaged 17th of September, so she's a little bit old. Uh, There's a bit of a rave on the can here, a bit about the brewery. Uh, well, actually, <laughs> there you go. Um, talking about me local, this is, these guys would go pretty close to being... I'm not sure exactly how fast it's human. Probably a bit under, maybe a bit under two hours, so maybe these are the closest brewery to me. Uh, I've had a few of these guys' beers. Um, I did had some of the um, beer festival over at Jugion, which is nearby. Uh, and I think, pretty sure Mullers has dropped me one of their beers before too. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'm just checking the cans. I'll make sure there's nothing weird I need to do here. Um, but it doesn't look like it. So, no one's telling me to invert the can or shake or bloody roll it around or... Okay. Now, I have seen this online, so I'm not getting a weird shock when I see the, uh, <laughs> the colour coming out of the top there. Um, <laughs> it is, it's fucking purple. Uh, that's something very bloody different. Well, now I'm being colour blind and there's purple in the can. To me, that looks more of a blue, but <laughs> that's her big blue fucking head. So anyway, let's have a bit of a read of the read of the blurb on here. Yeah, that's just about the about the brewery. Uh, Fifty Shades of Purple IPA. She looked at him across the room. She couldn't help but be attracted to him. But he was an IPA, and she was a Blue Heaven milkshake. But as his eye caught hers, she knew she felt the same way. Sorry, but as his eye met, caught hers, she knew he felt the same way. Their love should not be, but would would not be, could not be. Passion was just too great, they could not control their desires. When this hop when his hops met her vanilla, the fireworks started and what remains is a legend. It's true, it's deep, it's thick, it's fifty shades of purple. Okay. So there's a combination of an IPA and a blue heaven milkshake. 
Now, Blue Heaven obviously is just the uh, that the blue the blue flavour. Um, it's one of them things when you're gr growing up as a kid, even as an adult, you know, people say, "What well, flavour do you?" You know, um, particularly with the old the old icing shaved ice. Yeah, you know, what flavour do you want? Blue. Like blue's not a fucking flavour; it's a colour. But anyway, we've we've all grown up knowing that blue is a flavour. And they're clearly frowned in here. Okay, seven percent alcohol. Says on here IBU ten. EBC. It's just got a dash and no IB, EBC. Because um, it's going to be pretty hard to <laughs> throw a blue beer onto a onto the EBC scale. Anyway, um, ten IBU is awfully low. So I'm assuming there's a lot of lot of lot of uh, post boil and dry hopping going on. So there's no um, no bitterness there. Contains lactose and colours one two two and one three three. So no surprise that there's colours there. Uh, unfiltered. Treat like milk. Brewed in Schumann by the Schumann River Brewing Company. So there you go. Fucking blue beer. And it. it it, is, it does have a little bit of, it does have a purple tinge when you get it in just the right light. Now, and I've said it before, I am colour blind. Um, so this sort of thing that can really play tricks with my eyes, so I don't know. That could be really purple and I'm just getting it as more of a blue. But there are there is that tinge as the light's getting in there a little bit more. It's more blue over here and I can get, when I get some sort of some sunlight getting on the edges. Anyway, <laughs> the colour means sweet fuck all. It's all about. It's going to be more about. It's all about the flavour. Yeah, it's very little nose. Which always sort of surprises me with the these milkshake IPAs. The lack of nose, the amount of hops that realistically and generally get used in these sort of beers, they're very much lacking in the hop aroma. I assume, no, I assume it's the lactose. I assume the lactose somehow, whatever the lactose is doing in the beer, somehow it counteracts the aroma compounds of the hop. Because quite often you find a lot with beers that are lactose, got lactose, they tend to have that same, same sort of nose. It's not, but it's not hoppy. It's not, there's no hop nose there. It's, well, I said it, it's a, it's a fakeness. Okay. It tastes like a milkshake IPA. But as always with the style, the lactose just it takes over everything. Um, it's not leaving any interest. I mean, this the background stuff there, and it's all working. I mean, obviously, it's all playing together, but it, yeah, it's all the things I hate about the style. It's not a bad beer. I mean, for what the style is, it's a good. It, 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 it's bang. It's it's ticking those boxes. It does the things that, it, you know, that milkshake IPA should be doing. It just doesn't tick my boxes for what a bee should be doing. <coughs> Pardon me. So, there is certainly something wacky and unusual about drinking a coloured beer. Now, I get the whole, but normally with the, you know, St. Patrick's Day and you have green beer. Um, 
I don't really understand what the logic is with this. Um, you're not really providing any flavour because all they've all done is use colour. There's no mention at all of anything that they've used to provide some sort of that blue flavouring. Um, whether they've used something in the beer, I don't know, but it certainly doesn't appear so from the can. Uh, they just simply use colouring. I think they just made a. I think, and I'm assuming they just made a basic IP, milkshake IPA. Which on its own probably would have stood up within the style um, without any effort. So that seems to be on my. They've just added colouring to it to make it blue. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, look, that's a word I like to use and I'm going to use it. It's fucking wankery. Um, and it's like... It's hard to say that because... I don't know if it's intended to be that way. I think that's just looking... I think the broom might be just looking at something a little bit offbeat. Something a little bit different, you know. Um, something a bit whimsical perhaps you know going with the, the story of the yeah you know, the beer and the milkshake and you know um some bored during covid uh, maybe it was a way of try, trying to in, try, trying to spice up you know what was a, you know a pretty quiet and boring time at a time in the brewery wouldn't have been faring too well in the way of their normal touristing touristy travelers and things that were coming in and buying their beer um so maybe they were trying to drive some sort of you know some sort of interest within the brewery, you know, people see another people drinking blue beer and going, hang on, what's going on there? Um, but yeah, it's... The blue slash purple, to me, is unnecessary. Because I said, I'm not a big fan of Milkshake IPA, but as far as they go, this is up there, it's solid. It's... It's not ridiculously sweet. Um, there is some hop there, balancing up, there's some malt. Yeah, it's taking the blue taking the blue out and just coming back to the actual beer that's there. Um, yeah, I'd probably give it, yeah, I'd probably sit up in the seven and a half, eight, eight, eight score, somewhere around there. Uh, it's, I said, it's not my favourite style, but it doesn't mean I don't appreciate and understand where it's coming from and what it's trying to achieve. Um, I'd rather not drink them, but it's up there with any milkshake IPA I've ever drank. Um, and I said, push it on the better side of some of them, it's, not, it's certainly not as sweet. So, hmm. if you can get hold of it for something bloody different, yeah, maybe it's worth it. If you need your milkshake IPA, I know a lot of people are, give it a whirl because. You're gonna like it from the from the flavour perspective. You can block that out and not actually look at it. If you can't, if you didn't actually see what it was, you'd have no idea. You weren't just, you know, just straight up milkshake IPA. So all good. But anyway, Mallows, cheers for the beers, mate. Um, I will. Uh, let you off for the Todgy Balloon Brewing Company. Um, I have actually um, commented. I've, I've spoken to Mullows on the uh, on, on the um, on the old internet. I've messaged him um, while in between these beers, um, and he was he assured me that the uh, the bulletin was not a joke. It was just simply a beer he bought, probably in a you know it was probably cheap, um, and was not aware that it was so far out of date. Um, and quite possibly didn't even look at it when he was drinking it himself. Um, so, all good. So, my lace, cheers for the brews, mate. Um, 
it's always good. I love when you bring me beers, it's good. I could get to try stuff that I you know, don't often get to try and can't often. And so these are breweries that are, can be a little bit hard to find. Um, and you know, certainly don't get them online too often. So, for everyone at home, though, um, the last two, the Tumut River Milkshake IPA, you might not be able to get this purple filling, or maybe it was probably only sh a short run, um, but certainly that's good enough if they're, if they're still doing a milkshake IPA, give it a whirl because they're knocking that out pretty well. Um, Canova's Brewing, if you see that around, give it a crack as well. A lovely, lovely sessionable ale. But that's me, I'm done. I'm going to sit back now and <laughs> finish my Blue Heaven. Uh, it just whacks into the rest of the afternoon. So, as always, guys, you got any questions or comments, stick it down the bottom. Thumbs up the Patreons, cheers to the subscribers. Uh, if you haven't hit the like button yet, hit it now before we finish up. But that's me, I'm done. So until I see you again, we taste some more beers. Cheers.